Bagan is located 700 kilometers north of Yangon. The most convenient access is by flight from Yangon. It is a 45 minute journey from Yangon to Bagan and it is a very comfortable and pleasant flight. On the other hand, the road journey would take 8 to 9 hours. It was during the 11th and 13th centuries AD that the pagodas and temples were built by rulers and wealthy subjects of Bagan as a place of worship. Today, only 2,200 of these monuments survive. The local market at Nyangu is worth a visit. Anyone visiting here will be able to watch the daily lives and culture of the Bagan locals. The market can be divided into different sections depending on the type of goods being sold. There is the wet market, garment section, jewelry section, and many more. The Shwezigon Pagoda has existed for more than 900 years. It was built by King Anarata and later completed by his successor, King Kianzita. The grandeur of the architecture of the Shwezigon Pagoda serves as an architectural prototype for many of the stupas across Myanmar. According to legend, the spot where the pagoda was to be built was chosen by a white elephant carrying several Buddha relics on his back. This temple is mainly famous for its intricate fresco works which are remarkably well preserved. Many of the paintings depict scenes from Buddha's life story. However, photography is not allowed in a temple for conservation purposes. This temple is known to be the last Myanmar-style temple built in Bagan. According to legend, King Narapati Situ had five sons. He had to choose one of them to be crowned prince. He placed the white umbrella, which was one of the royal regalia, in the center of the sons who were ranged around it. When the umbrella tilted towards Zia Tienka, he was to be crowned prince. Tilomilo was the name given to him, which meant favored by the white umbrella and favored by the king. Manuha Temple is one of the oldest temples in Bagan. Manuha was named after the Mon king who was held captive in Bagan by King Anarata. According to the legend, Manuha constructed the temple to represent his displeasure at captivity. The colossal Buddha images in the temple represents the stress and lack of comfort that the captive king had to endure. The Ananda Temple has been titled The Westminster Abbey of Burma. Many say that you cannot be said to have visited Bagan if you did not visit this impressive temple. The architecture style of the temple is said to be a fusion of Mon and Indian. There are four Buddha images in standing posture facing four cardinal points in the temple. These Buddha statues represent the four Buddhas that had appeared and reached Nirvana. The Shue Sandor Pagoda is the perfect site to view the magnificent sunrise or sunset in Bagan. However, it does get overcrowded very fast in the evening. The steps are also very steep, so do be careful. Heho is 225 kilometers away from Mandalay and 620 kilometers away from Yangon. If you are taking a plane from Mandalay to Heho, the journey will only take 30 minutes. It is a comfortable and pleasant flight. The road journey from Mandalay to Heho will take 3 hours. If you are flying from elsewhere to Heho, please check out the domestic flights. 
Inle Lake is 21 kilometers away from Heho Airport. The Inle Lake One Day Boat Cruise is one of the most highlighted attractions in Myanmar. The lake is 20 kilometers long and 10 kilometers at its widest. Inle Lake has 80 self sufficient floating villages with a population of 80,000 people. Many of the residents are self-sufficient farmers or fishermen who live in simple houses on stilts. The local fishermen are known as the One Lake Rowers for their distinctive rowing style. The villages have become a hive of activities for the residents. The fishermen use their oars to beat the water surface to scare the fishes into their fishing nets. One of the key activities of the locals is to grow vegetables and fruits in the floating garden. Textiles made from lotus stems are produced by skillful artisans in the Lotus Weaving Center. The labor-intensive process will definitely pique your interest. Once the lotus stems are collected, the fiber from the stems are extracted. On a wooden table, several stems are cut and the fibers are pulled out, twisted and hand-rolled with water to create a thick thread when it is dried. Naturally, lotus threads have a creamy color. When the weaving process is complete, the product is boiled in natural dye to soften its fiber. It is an extremely tedious process which makes the handmade product one of a kind. A scarf requires about 4,000 to 40,000 lotus stems depending on its size. The Pang Da Wu Pagoda houses five gilded images of the Buddha in which the original form of the statue cannot be seen anymore. An 18-day pagoda festival is held annually, in which four of the Buddha images are placed on a royal canal boat and taken throughout Inlay Lake. Many tourists are flocking to this souvenir shop to catch a glimpse of Myanmar's giraffe women. Here, you will also be able to buy souvenirs and observe the women while they are weaving. It is the cultural identity of the Kayan tribe to wear the brass coils around their necks from as young as 5 years old. And this has become a subject of fascination to many photographers and tourists alike. One of your unexpected companions on your boat ride is none other than nature's creation, the seagulls. The seagulls are more than willing to accept any tidbits that people would offer to them. It is a pretty sight as you get to see the seagulls flying, fishing and at times close to the water surface and for sure they are a photographer's delight. And that's the end of this Myanmar series. Please leave a like and a comment. I hope that you enjoyed watching and I'll see you in the next series.